Hello. First tonight, the local economy is set to power the region out of recession. Cambridge and Milton Keynes have been named today as two of the best places in the country. A survey by the charity Centre for Cities says they have robust local economies which are needed to succeed. Here's our chief reporter, Kim Riley. This is an annual index of the economies of 64 leading towns and cities. Cambridge and Milton Keynes picked out as star performers. Why? Well, they have strong private sectors. They also have lots of entrepreneurs, and there's a highly skilled workforce in both places. In Cambridge, perhaps not surprisingly, around 52% of the working population have high-level qualifications, the best in the whole country. Over the past two years, the number of local people on job seekers' allowance has gone up by less than 1%. Now, that's, again, better than anywhere else. And average weekly earnings, again, near the top of the tree at £540. But Cambridgeshire Chambers of Commerce feared that today overcrowded roads could scupper the recovery. Our infrastructure is something which needs investing in and we will not be able to continue with the kind of strength that we currently have if we're not able to ensure that we have an infrastructure that's fit for the next 10 years or so. Well, Milton Keynes is number one when it comes to creating new jobs in the two years from 2006, steaming ahead by over 8% in job creation. Business births, as they call them, a year per 10,000 population. The figure is 60, and that's well, well above the national average. Joe Black has been to see the local economy in action. Strategically well placed in the heart of the country, over 7.5 million people live within an hour's drive of Milton Keynes. It has a huge spectrum of sectors, and over half of the businesses boast international customers and supply chains. But how has it coped during this recession? We certainly, you know, have had a, you know, a tough year, but Milton Keynes was, is the place I'd, I'd want to be. Glenn Warner runs Promote UK, a company which produces gifts for business. Last year, turnover was down by almost a quarter of a million pounds. But he feels being in Milton Keynes gives him an edge over the competition. And now business is beginning to pick up. It's very logistical, in a good position, just off the M1, just off many major routes. Um, it's, you're not tied to one area uh, if you need to, for different routes out of the town. So it's just a very good hub for business. Evidence talks are the digital forensics experts. Last year, their turnover fell by 5% and 10 people were made redundant here. But refocusing the business meant the team could launch this brand new product, even in troubled times. And now computer giant Dell have come knocking. We were a product software and hardware business as well as a service industry for the forensic market. We decided to refocus completely on our products. So yes, a number of sleepless nights, but we absolutely feel we've made the right decision. Of course, nowhere is recession-proof, and people here have struggled. But this is a young and vibrant town that has the ability to bounce back. Joe Black, BBC Look East. That's the Milton Keynes success story. As to other cities, the report marks out Peterborough, Luton and Ipswich as being relatively low on skill base, and that needs attention. Let's go to Ipswich. Carol Emery runs a dress agency in the town, and she says that for small traders, the times remain very, very tough. I just think the whole town needs cleaning up, really, and we need a flagship store like John Lewis, Waitrose, to bring more people into the town. And then more people come down here to 4th Street, you know, and to the other small businesses. Well, as for Norwich, it lost almost 9,000 jobs in the two years to 2008, a 6% drop, the worst in the survey, but the research shows it's very well placed for recovery. In Cambridge, it's striking, really, how Peterborough has suffered so much more than Cambridge, really not very far away, and with a much bigger rise there in the numbers claiming benefits. What's quite emerging from this is that we're going to see a, recess a recession pulling out of recession, but the recovery is almost bound to be very patchy. Kim, thank you very much. The trust which runs Basildon Hospital is facing legal action over the death of a patient. Carl Flack, who was severely disabled, died after getting tangled up in the rails of his bed. News of the legal action comes on the day the health watchdog said the performance of the hospital is improving. Kyle Flack had cerebral palsy. He died in 2006 at Basildon Hospital. His head became trapped in the rails surrounding his bed. His mother says it shouldn't have been allowed to happen. Now it's emerged the Health Trust faces prosecution. 
The allegation is the trust didn't do enough to ensure Kyle's safety. The legal action couldn't have come at a worse time for the trust that runs Basildon Hospital. Two months ago, the hospital was criticised for having high death rates and low standards of cleanliness. Since then, there have been other setbacks. Two patients here recently contracted Legionnaire's disease. The Legionella bacteria is carried by infected water and can lead to pneumonia. In Basildon Town Centre, locals said their confidence in their community's hospital had been shaken. You definitely would get lose confidence, wouldn't you? If you're, count, you're not only the cleanliness of the place, now you've got Legionnaire's disease up there. I've got to go for an X-ray, but I won't go for an X-ray while they've got Legionnaire's here, so I'm going to watch it. Because as far as I can tell, it's not that bad a hospital. And I was surprised when the um, problem started, you know, you know, be, you know, surfacing, really. The health watchdog, Monitor, sent in a so-called task force to raise standards, and one local MP says it's working. Material progress has been made, management are cooperating, still some way to go before it's given it back its authorization as a foundation trust, but having questioned the Secretary of State about this, having met the management and having met Monitor, I'm confident that that progress is ongoing. Tonight, the Health Trust itself said it had ambitious improvement targets and was heading in the right direction. Meanwhile, the court hearing in connection with Kyle Flack's death is scheduled for this Friday in Basildon. Gareth George, BBC Look East. Still to come in the programme, how this region is helping with the relief effort in Hi Haiti. Uh, Julie has been skating on the fence and how does this radio help tell the history of the world? Five years ago, an amusement arcade at Wells Next to Sea in Norfolk burned down. Many people believe the site on the quayside is an eyesore which will put off visitors and must be redeveloped or demolished. It's a picturesque quayside, a summer tourist magnet. But in Wells, Gray's amusement arcade has been a blot on the landscape since the fire on January the 24th, 2005. Enough is enough, and I think this is exactly how everybody in the town is feeling. With the fifth anniversary coming up, they think that this time that they saw some progress with this building. When the arcade and an adjoining shop burnt down, local people expected redevelopment, but nothing has happened. It's believed a disagreement within the Gray family has led to a stalemate, and no one was available for comment today. At the back, the 16th century roof is falling down. I'm saddened to see um, a part of a listed building, it is listed in its own right, um, deteriorate, the roof's deteriorating obviously, and uh, so it will be inside. There's a petition in local shops to get something done about the arcade and several hundred people have already signed. The response has been phenomenal, yeah. Um, all my early morning customers have come in and I've just mentioned the fact I will sign it. Very, very few negative responses, which is absolutely brilliant. North Norfolk Council say compulsory purchase is a last resort. Instead, they're mediating with the owners of different parts of the site. Planners hope there could be an application by the end of this year. Ian Barmer, BBC Look East, Wells Next to Sea. A man from Suffolk is on a list of the ten most wanted bogus callers in Britain. Patrick Gilheny, who's in his 20s, is wanted in connection with a large number of distraction burglaries in Suffolk, Norfolk and Bedfordshire. An investigation is underway after an explosion at a car workshop in Essex. It happened at Great Yeldham near Halstead this morning, causing a fire to break out. Six crews were called in to douse the flames, which engulfed a number of vehicles. A group of people from Elmswell in Suffolk who were left without heating for five days have been told they won't get compensation for their electricity bills. The Orwell Housing Association gave them electric heaters after the green energy system at Clayfield Eco Homes broke down. <laughs> 